This program is brought to you by The Advantage, helping to bring your financial reality a little closer to your dreams. Steph Nash reporting there. Now this week, the key number out is the economic growth numbers. They're out on Wednesday. There's also a Reserve Bank Board meeting on Tuesday and retail trade numbers, they come out on Thursday to take us through some of that. We're joined by independent economist Warren Hogan, who's also a consultant to the small business lender Judo Bank. Warren, thanks for your time as always. Now, these key events, you know, are all important, but of course it's also going to be, you know, key to make certain that we really right now have got things such as so inflation, under control, interest rates are under control. All of that is important for government when you've got Victoria in lockdown right now. Yeah, well, well, it remains to be seen how long this lockdown lasts for. It's a timely reminder that we're not out of COVID and there's headwinds for the economy. But I think what we're going to see this week is more strong economic data where we've had some very, very strong business investment numbers last week. Um, and this week, the market's expecting a 1% increase in GDP. This comes after two 3% increases, all but erasing the losses from COVID. So very strong economic data. OK, the strong economic data, but that's all in the past. Right now, you've got another lockdown in Victoria. The question is whether that spooks the horses. What's the history of these lockdowns? There's obviously a rebound afterwards, mm. but do they have a, an immediate impact on the economies, uh, the national economy when the Victorian lockdowns happen? No, not, not the national economy. In fact, the, the only lockdown we've seen that has national implications was the big one in Victoria last year. Every other lockdown, whether it was the Avalon outbreak here or what happened in Perth, has been trans. It obviously has implications for those impacted, but if it's just a short-term phenomenon, the national economy has powered through all of these. OK, so then it comes down to other aspects that are sitting out there right now, like in the United States. They're now openly talking about inflation and questioning whether really this is the best time it's going to be for low interest rates. You and I have discussed that in the past, but there are telltales around the place that suggest that maybe there is some, some inflation coming back into our economy. We are. We're starting to see signs out of the global economy of a genuine inflation pulse. Um, whether you talk about the manufacturing sector having a record level of backlog, commodity prices, supply chain price pressures, these are all emerging in the US. We've seen some big numbers for the month of April. Now, at the moment, most central banks and the RBA are calling it transitory. They're yeah. calling it a one-off bounce back. So they look through this, in other words, because if you look at the underlying trend of inflation in Australia, it's going down. It's still looking as though it's on the way down. Oh, inflation's been falling for decades. Yeah. And I'd argue, though, that be careful, inflation is a backward-looking indicator. So what we've got here right now reflects the past. The future is a very different story. And there are inflation pressures coming through. Here in Australia, the big issue well, it's the big issue all around the world, is whether or not these transitory factors, high commodity prices, shortages of materials, this sort of thing, translates into a general inflation. That's all about wages. Yes. And the thing we've got here in Australia is we've got a government that's foot to the floor on fiscal stimulus, interest rates at zero. We just, we've seen the auction markets. We know there's a huge amount of momentum in this economy, but we've shut the borders to the marginal worker. Half the workers that come into this economy every year are from overseas. And we're trying to push that unemployment rate as low as we can. We're trying to get participation rate up, but wage pressures could emerge. OK, so that's the important thing. But when you, again, look at wages growth, you have seen a rebound, but certainly not to the extent that you've seen it before COVID. In other words, it was on a trend before coronavirus arrived. It has rebounded, certainly, but it's certainly not back to the point at which the Reserve Bank, at least, says it's uncomfortable. Yeah, so the last couple of wage numbers have bounced back and... I like to look at the six-month annualised chart and it shows you that we're sort of back to normal in terms of the last five years. But we're still below 3%. We're running at about a 2.5% annual rate at the moment. 3% is the magic number. Alarm bells don't start ringing until 4%. So it seems like that's miles away. We haven't seen it for 10 years, but we can see it very, very quickly. If these wage pressures, if these labour market shortages are, become quite binding in the next 12 months, if we don't get our borders open, we don't get those new workers in, we could have some real problems in 18 months. And the problem is you can't wait for it to happen because once it's happened, you have to put the economy in recession in order to get it out of the system. OK, but then, then there's one other aspect of this. The Reserve Bank may well decide to look through it because it says at some point in the future there's going to be enough people vaccinated, we're going to be able to open the borders, we know that they've got a plan to actually increase the migration levels into Australia once the borders are open to overcome these labour shortages. Mm. So doesn't the Reserve Bank say, eh, that's OK, it's not a problem, it's not going to be a problem in the future? I think they do, and, I, and that's the message coming from them and from the Federal Reserve in the United States. States. The thing that the markets are worrying about is 
just like in the early 70s, looking through it, looking through the oil price shock, it didn't work. It turned into a generalised decade-long inflation. Now, that's a remote risk at the moment. But central banks are paid to risk manage this. And as inflation pressures emerge, I think you're going to see their rhetoric shift. Maybe not in the next few months, but if this continues through the end of the year. And, of course, this is critical for equity markets. If those long-term interest rates start going up on the pricing of the risks of inflation equity markets will wobble. So there is, there is, this, is, this is in play. So what you're saying is that there's heightened risk right now for equities markets, which also says something about property markets as well, where people are paying so much for properties even this weekend as we speak. That's right. I mean, in America, it's all about equities. In this country, it's all about house prices. So definitely there's that medium term, you know, one year risk that house prices won't keep going up. I'll tell you what, Warren, always great to have you in the program. Warren Hogan there.